Jerry Brown is the longest serving governor in California's history, and as his final term ends, a new book outlines his family's lasting legacy. He and his father, Pat Brown, were staples of California politics for decades, both serving as governor, but their policies couldn't be more different. Pulitzer Prize winning author Miriam Powell's new book, The Browns of California, looks at the father and son's political journeys and the impact that their contrasting policies leave behind. It's great to have you. Thanks for having me. So how did the Brown family get their start in California politics? Um, Pat Brown was the grandson of a Prussian immigrant, so mm. like many in California. California is a state of immigrants. Um, he came, he had a lower class upbringing and uh, managed to run for governor in 1958 and be the first Democrat elected in decades in California as governor. So that really set the stage for both his own reign and his son's. The and so what were the contrasts between the, the two of them, the father and you son You know, Pat Brown is your classic 1950s back-slapping, baby-kissing politician who was the perfect governor for this era in California when the state was growing by a thousand people a day that were moving there after the war and a thousand babies being born. Wow. And Pat Brown presided over the construction of the water project, the highways, the universities. And then his son, Jerry, was elected the first time governor in 1974. He was 36 years old. He was dating Linda Ronstadt. He was the post-Watergate, post-Vietnam generation. So there, um, there are a lot of common parts of their philosophy in terms of um, their moral values and their embrace of things that make California, California. But, you know, they're different. It was a huge generational change. What was the relationship like between father and son? Um, I think like a typical father and son relationship, there was a lot of talk at the time. I mean, Jerry needed to distinguish himself from his father. He was Edwin G. Brown Jr. That was part of why he got elected. But suddenly you've got this kid who's the governor and, you know, a legislator, legislature that is on average probably twice his age. Um, so the first time around he was kind of went out of his way to not be his father. and. Um, there was a lot of talk. Pat Brown would try to recommend people and candidates for jobs, and they would invariably be rejected. So, so Jerry Brown gets elected first in the 70s, right. and then again in, you know, right. just here recently. What was he doing in between? Out How did of that off, work out? Out of office from 1982 until 1998, when he staged his political comeback by being elected mayor of Oakland. Huh. A pretty unlikely platform to kind of stage a comeback like that. But he did a lot of things. It was, he, was, he ran for president. He ran twice for president in 76 and 80 while he was governor. And then again in 1992 against Bill Clinton, actually, some famous debate scenes there. And uh, he did, was a radio show host. He studied Zen Buddhism in Japan, um, traveled around the world. And then, but was kind of a complete political creature. I mean, the Browns are just as political a family as the Kennedys, but mm. we kind of hear a lot less about them, I think, because they're in California. Uh, tell me a bit about the influence that women had in the lives of both these men. My understanding is in the book, you go into this in some detail. Yes. Um, you know, people know more about Pat and Jerry because they were both governor, but there is a really interesting, the book starts with Jerry's great-grandfather, August Shuckman, the pioneer, whose daughter, Ida, his, Jerry's grandmother, Pat's mother, was a really the matriarch of the family. And then Jerry's mother, Bernice, was a precocious student who went to the University of California at Berkeley when she was 14 years old. Um, so a very important influence. Jerry had three sisters. So he kind of grew up surrounded by women. And in, in very kind of famously in his ninth, first time in office, and Jerry won, uh, put women in positions of power that they had never had before, and heads of agencies and all sorts of appointments that I think today would be considered pretty mainstream, but at the time were pretty radical. And I think a lot of that kind of traces back to this sort of line of very strong, smart women in the family. What made you want to tell this story at this moment? You know, I, it's a story of California. I mean, it's a story of a family that has never been told in the way that, again, I think some of the political dynasties of the East Coast have had their stories told. Right. And as someone who is a New Yorker and who moved to California relatively recently, um, I thought it was also, I mean, they're just a fascinating family. They're pretty remarkable. I mean, who gets to come back as governor 30 years later and undo some of the things that you did Wasn't the first the youngest time? youngest and now also the oldest Correct. governor in California. He's 80 history. years old now, so he was both the youngest and the oldest, the longest serving because he was first elected before term limits came in, so he was able to run for another two terms now. 
Um, and they're really, it's a, such a California story. And I think there's a lot of things, I can say this as a former New Yorker, yeah. that people on the East Coast do not understand about California. There's kind of, it's either. Give a, us an example. Um, you know, it's either a dystopian disaster or it's a utopian paradise. Well, I was, and, I see. You know, it's one or the other, and it's really <laughs> neither of those. It's far more complicated. I was going to ask you, um, and by the way, that, as a New Yorker, that is my perception right. of California. See, right. Depending on the day, right. it's either perfect or it's horrible. Exactly. How is it doing? How is the state of California doing right now in terms of governance? How well is it being governed? Um, you know, I think that this has been the most stable. Jerry Brown came into office. There was a $26 billion deficit left by Arnold Schwarzenegger, who was the governor just before him. Um, and the state has now got a surplus. I think he may be the first governor ever in California to leave office with a significant budget surplus. So it's doing well financially in that sense. We also have high poverty rates, high problems with homelessness, inequality. housing, income inequality is a huge problem. Um, it just, the schools are problematic. So there's a lot of issues, but on the whole, I think people are pretty, you know, the, the, the voters passed a tax increase in 2012 and then reaffirmed that into, it was a temporary tax that was reaffirmed in 2016. So I think there's a, a degree of confidence in government and satisfaction with it that we haven't seen in California for a long time. I mean, before Brown was elected, there was this sense that it was an ungovernable state. Right. And there were a lot of stories about right. that. Um, so things are stable. California's budget is very dependent on the super wealthy. So in the next recession, we're going to get hit badly again. Uh, but on the whole, I think, especially in this day and age, we're kind of a counterpoint to what's going on in Washington and your city. Um, there are, I think, 40 some odd lawsuits that the attorney general has filed in California against various Trump policies particularly immigration and environmental issues. So California, by virtue of its size, it's the fifth largest economy in the world. Yeah. So anything that California does has that you know, impact. And that's also why I wrote the book in the sense that I think understanding the history of California helps to understand what the state really is and how complicated a place. And that's really relevant right now because yeah. California is playing an even more outsized role um, in determining policies across the country. Yeah, we've been we've been covering some of the policies that are mm -hmm. coming out of California that are first the nation. Miriam Powell, thank you so much. We Thanks really appreciate it. Good luck with the book. Good to be here. Thank you. Coming up, an octopus, some ecstasy, and the science behind all of that, and a big cocaine shipment that almost went to a prison. Airline seats could be getting bigger. See, there's good news, Crystal. Good things <laughs> happening. How Congress is helping with that when rising continues.